My daughter saved my life. She saved my life. My mom was very sick. Um, we were in Stockton and we were going to the county hospital and her stomach was really big and they call it ascites and they had to drain it out. And they told me it was because of her liver was failing. She had cirrhosis of the liver. I had no idea what any of this was. So then um, they gave her about two years to live and there was not much they could do. So me being optimistic, I was like, well, let's get a second opinion. I found out that you have to be on a list, but you can get a new liver, but it wasn't that simple. So I asked, well, how do you sign up? Where do you, how do you get on a waiting list? And they explained a mount score and it has to be high enough and then you can be on a transplant list. And I found out UCSF has a transplant team, but I, the referrals were taking too long and I wasn't getting all the answers. After we established that, I talked to her doctors and then they started giving me referrals that I was requesting. In the process of all of this, she got really sick and then we find out she had cryptococcal meningitis. So we were in our hometown and they were telling me that there's no cure for cryptococcal meningitis. They're gonna make my mom comfortable. Me not accepting this and already having a relationship with UCSF, I called because there was always someone for me to be able to talk to or contact. And they explained to me there is no cure for it, but they can help to where she can live with this. When we were going back and forth to find out um, about the cirrhosis of the liver, and they said, you need to stop drinking, which didn't happen right away. Um, alcoholism, you're addicted, so she would still drink. I wanted her to live, I wanted her to fight, I wanted her to be okay. But drinking, one, you won't be on the transplant list, two, you're not gonna get better. I didn't think I was sick, so, I mean, gonna die. I always sugarcoated everything for her. So I made her believe that you're never in danger of dying because of this or the other. So I, I really sheltered her as far as that part. Then her liver started to fail. Her melt score was getting higher, but still not high enough to get a transplant. With no hesitation, I wanted to know, how do I sign up, what do we do? and they were all very helpful and very informational. I did a lot of testing in two days. So we have a very thorough consent process of all our donors from the start before they start any testing here at UCSF. We meet with them for at least an hour. So it could be longer if they have you know, more questions, for example, or if we require interpretation for the patient, then it could go for two, two and a half hours. <laughs> so as a clinical social worker, I do a full psychosocial evaluation with each and every patient that I see. I do sort of like the bread and butter of social work, you know, food, shelter, clothing. Can a person maintain that? Are they maintaining it now for themselves? Can they maintain that for themselves after a donation? I also do a psychosocial assessment in terms of past psychiatric history, current psychiatric history, as well as substance use both in the past and currently as well. UCSF has the the recipient and the donor team. And on my team, I had Sandy that I was able to talk to um, a lot of the time, uh, and she made sure I was okay. So by law, it's um, in our guidelines, the CMS guidelines, it's required that there is a separate team for the donor that allows the donor to have an opportunity to speak freely and that their needs, that they have advocacy for them and only them. It, did, it didn't take very long at all um, to find out I can donate. It's, it's I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm loving life. I can't get mad at them because I have a new life and it's just beautiful.
I was an advocate for my mom from the beginning. I already had a lot of love for my daughter because she, she was there for me and fighting for me. I just knew she was going to fix it. I just love her and I thank her every day. I just am amazed at the generosity of spirit uh, that these um, folks uh, exemplify. The advice I give to organ donors, live uh, people and organ recipients and everybody who will listen to me is to be healthy. And I want them to see this operation as an opportunity perhaps to turn a leap and to think about being healthy for the rest of their lives. People think that there's a big change in lifestyle complications or just activities and most people sort of walk away from this and are just flying. They're happier than they've ever been because they've been able to donate and they have just an incredible quality of life because they've been able to help a loved one.